Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Today we're going to be discussing Lodash and Underscore. Now, Lodash and Underscore are very similar libraries um, that provide a toolkit for developers to use while writing code. Um, both are quite performant and both are updated quite frequently. If we have a look at their GitHub repos, we can see that Underscore has been updated a day ago, has about 15,000 stars, and has 2,000 commits. Lodash has 5,000 commits, and it's been updated 12 hours ago, and it has about 9,000 stars. Overall, they're good libraries. Generally, Lodash has more stuff, and we're going to be looking at Lodash mostly in this library tutorial. To code along at home, open up your developer tools with Control shift i on a PC or Command-Option-I on a Mac. On the left, you can see a list of all the features Lodash has. Lodash has functions which work on arrays. They have a series of chain tools. There are functions that work on collections, which are arrays or objects. And you can see here, some of them are grayed out, which means that they've been replaced by newer versions of that function. It has a small section for date, a bunch of function utilities, uh, various JavaScript related lang utilities, some math, some number, some object utilities, some string utilities, some utility utilities, and well, the list goes on. In this tutorial, we don't have enough time to go over all of them because there are hundreds, but we'll try to go through one from almost each section. To begin with, arrays. Array are functions that work on, well, arrays. We're just going to have a look at the first one chunk. So array.chunk breaks an array up into smaller chunks. We can have a look at um, this by creating a new array. So we'll say var array equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we'll say underscore.chunk array, I'll spell that wrong, array, and we'll break it into two sized chunks. So here it's given me three arrays, each with two elements from the original array inside it. It's broken the array into chunks. The array section is full of useful stuff like this, and I encourage you to look into more of them in depth. You'll notice that some of them, such as uh, each in the collection section, and a few others, already exist in other uh, natively in JavaScript. Generally, Lodash tries to be more performance-friendly uh, than the native versions. So if you can, you should consider using your Lodash versions. Chain is um, a little bit complicated, so we're going to skip that. Collection has various functions that you might see, as mentioned before, in JavaScript, like filter, every, etc. There's a few useful ones that aren't in JavaScript, though, like pluck. Pluck will take a um, collection of objects and return uh, whatever the key is in that object. So we'll make an array, and inside it we'll put three objects. And we'll give each of the objects a property. Name, the first one will be John. Second one, the name will be Aria. Third one, the name will be Rob. And now if we say underscore dot pluck. Uh, we have to define this array as a variable. So just copy that and say underscore dot pluck and paste in the array and say name. You get a new array of just John, Aria, and Rob. It's pretty useful. You could use a map for that, but pluck can be clearer. In the function section are various useful things. For the purposes of this tutorial, we are just going to look at once. So once will modify a function, so that function will only be called once ever. So we'll define a function, we'll call that function annoy, and it will just console.log annoy. So if we call annoy, it will annoy. Now we'll wrap it in once, so we'll say var annoy once equals underscore dot once annoy. Now if we call annoy once, it will annoy. But if we call it again, it won't annoy us again. So underscore dot once is pretty useful for that. 
Next up, after functions, there's a few useful things. Language has various utility functions for um, determining if stuff is true or false or is an array. So in this case, we're going to look at is array. Determining if something is an array can be a little bit tricky depending on what browsers you're trying to support. So we'll define an array, var array equals one, two, three. And if we call underscore dot is array on the array, it will return true. If we call underscore dot is array on an object, it will return false. Lang is full of stuff that does stuff just like this, and it's pretty clear and useful. In the number, we have a random. Let's give that a shot, underscore dot random. And give it a min and a max. And it'll return a random number in between the min and the max. Not too bad. Inside object, object functions are very useful because JavaScript objects are confusing. Let's have a look at... Assign. So with the sign, you can take various properties from objects and attach them to other objects. This is like using a for loop. So we'll take an object and we'll say var John is, we'll say var object is equal to, we'll make an object and we'll say name is John. And now we'll make another one, object two, and we'll say last name is Stark. So now we, if we call underscore dot extend object object two, we get John Stark. Sounds about right. So that was extend, and extend works a lot like assign. In this case, they work the same way. 